the DAS timeline shorter than building new sites, would you say? Uh, I would, would offer, that's a great question, man. I would offer this. It's actually a context question, so let me, let me explain that briefly. Um, DAS is typically a necessary and viable option that carriers need to provide reliable coverage. Mm -hmm. The DASs are frequently being pursued in areas where we have long sought to break through and, and provide a solution at a macro level, but for whatever reason, we haven't been able to, to arrive at an accommodation with the jurisdiction. So we go through a long period of time where we try to press the macro solution, and then we move then into a DAS solution. So is it shorter than building new sites? In that context, I think you would say no but we are successful ultimately going through a distributed into the system mm -hmm. and arriving at a solution and we're happy with that. Okay. You know, it might take a little bit longer. I'm curious, I mean, do you, do you see DAS as, as an alternative to cell tower sites or is it an add-on, I guess, a, a fill-in mechanism? I think the answer to that is clearly a fill-in and add-on system in addition to the regular cellular tower sites and rooftop sites. Okay. And that it also gives the, the engineers another tool in our bag of tricks of how to provide the capacity and the coverage needed in given areas where we've been, as, as was stated, we've been unsuccessful in certain areas. This gives us one more tool available to us to use. Good. Um, can we talk, let's get into the, the costs a little bit. Uh, would you say that DAS can reduce the cop, CAPEX per site costs? And what about the operating costs? It's a good question. I would say that we have enough history now with distributed into systems, particularly at a macro level, as, as Peter described, as versus uh, in-building systems. So if we stay at the macro uh, DAS, it, it, I would argue and, and present that, that history would tell us it's a, pretty much a net wash. We're taking about the same amount of money in total between CapEx and, mm -hmm. and OpEx and perhaps using it slightly differently, but in total, the current structure where you, where the carrier leases the fiber and leases the node elements and goes through that process is a net wash. And, and the business case is, is to say that a particular DAS is designed to offset a certain number of macro sites that would be needed to cover that area and you take a business case and as long as it sort of net washes mm -hmm. it, it moves forward and, and I think we found historically that at the moment it's just sort of a, a net net neutral uh, costing model. Good. Anything to add? I want to add uh, one notion uh, and that is uh, generally speaking a DAS system uh, to cover the same territory, the same land area or service area that a macro site or a tower site uh, would cover would be five or six DAS sites uh, to cover the same area. And uh, our company uh, has deployed from time to time uh, one or two DAS sites just to cover a small dead zone, a small area that's not served by the macro site so we can easily just um, provide one or two sites to fill in where that may be necessary. I think, and, and I describe that as a, as a micro web extension. Mm -hmm. So to your first question, uh, I view that as an augment to, you know, we may have a, a very, very minute need. And it's the nature, I think, of the evolution of networks that the coverage requirement is becoming very, very precise for our engineering group. And so the, flexibility of your development teams to come up with a, a vast number of solutions has been mm -hmm. highly curtailed. Okay.